Hi, my name is Kwaku Rogers and welcome to another intro to our video where we will be focusing on creating and manipulating vectors. Vectors are ordered lists of data that share the same data type. A list has a first item, a second item, and so on. So it has an order, but it doesn't have a direction. So it could be a row or it could be a column. It's just a list. There are actually six different vector types, logical, integer, double, character, complex, and raw. Logical vectors consist of either true or false values. Integers and doubles are both numeric. The difference between the two is that doubles are float numbers, meaning that they use decimals, while integers are whole numbers. Character values consist of qualitative descriptions like words and labels. Raw and complex types are rarely used in data analysis, so we'll put those aside for now. To construct a vector, you can input numerical values separated by commas or character strings surrounded by quotations and commas. These individual values are then combined using the concatenate function, which combines individual elements of the vector into a list. On line 83, to figure out what a particular command in R does, we use the question mark behind the function. After running line 83, the help tab will open at the bottom of the R studio depicting the R documentation about the particular function which in this case is the concatenate function. On line 80, I'm running the vector numbers. I'm constructing a vector with a list of numbers and R recognizes this vector as a value in my global environment. A key tip to keep in mind is that all values in R are vectors, whether it's a list of values or one individual value. They're all vectors. A single value is just a vector with a length of one. Furthermore, the description of my vector tells me that this is a numeric vector with a length of five. When vectors are saved as objects, objects are essentially how R stores data. You can perform arithmetic or functions on objects. On line 86, we can call the object by itself vector numbers, and this will return the list of all the elements inside the object vector numbers onto the console. I can also double check if this vector numbers is a numeric vector. On line 92, I'm using the is.numeric function. After running line 92, this returns true. Another example of a vector is a character vector on line 95 with a list of five countries. R recognizes this as a character vector with a length of five. But let's check to see again if this is also a numeric vector on line 100. This returns false. With is.character on line 101, it returns true since this is a character vector. Now, as I've said earlier, you can perform arithmetic on vectors and perform functions. For example, on line 107, I've created a height object with 70 attached to this height. If I want to perform arithmetic, I do so on line 110 by adding seven to the height object, which is my actual height saved into my environment. But let's say I want to create a height vector with my actual height. I can add this along with other height data points to create a list of heights on line 113. Now, if I want to figure out what the average height is in this list of given heights, on line 116, I use the mean function to determine the average, which will appear on the console as 68.25.